Greetings and blessings, dear friends in the spirit. One, one, one. It's Eddie Luisi. Good morning. How are you? I hope you had a great week. Um, we have some new friends that are joining us. I joined a few more other groups, so welcome to all you friends in other groups. <laughs> God bless you all. So for those of you who don't know, I started two weeks ago, um, talks called Here I Am, Lord, I Come to Do Your Will. Today is part three, and it should be the final part. Hopefully I'll finish, but I got tons of notes. I gave an actual talk in person at Lynch's Restaurant in Stony Point um, two weekends ago. And um, so I'm sharing that talk, and, and actually I didn't finish the talk live, so I'm finishing the talk here. So don't forget to share your faith with family and friends, and here we go. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will, part three. So, in 2004, I joined something called PEA, Perpetual Eucharistic Adoration. Um, that's a Catholic uh, ministry. And in the Catholic faith, Catholics believe that Jesus is present in the Eucharist, in the, the bread and the wine. And a perpetual Eucharistic adoration chapel, Jesus in a host form, in a round, circular, kind of like wafer form, is in what's called a monstrance. And it's, it's like a gold-type stand, and it's round, and it has points. It's almost like, looks like the sun. And Jesus is placed on an altar, and they have people that come in every hour. They sign up, and they're called adorers or guardians. And they come every hour, 24 hours, seven days a week, and... We had our 15th anniversary, 15th year anniversary just the other day. And I put it on Facebook. So God bless all those who've been coming for 15 years. Um, I started as an overnight section leader. So I think from midnight to six in the morning, something like that, I was in charge of all those hours and coordinating and organizing all the different people. And I also went in five days a week from three to 4 a.m until we could get more people to do it, because that's a hard hour to fill. Um, so that's what perpetual Eucharistic adoration is. So if you're into stopping by, you, you know, honestly, you don't have to be a Catholic or a Christian to stop by and pray, right? It's a nice quiet chapel. You could go in there and you can meditate, you could pray, you could read. Um, it's a wonderful place to go to. In, at St. Greg's in Garneville, St. Gregory Barbarigo, if you're checking it out. And so actually, this is where I stopped. I don't even think I went this far in the talk. So this is all brand new if anybody was there live two weeks ago. I'm going to read a little um, prayer from the Medjugorje book. Medjugorje is a place in Europe, Yugoslavia, I think, that um, Blessed Mary supposedly appeared and for those people she did so i don't know but i believe i believe she appeared and this was a book and each day there was a little prayer and a little message for mary and and then a little gospel type uh, reading so that's what i'm going to read this was april 4th you will encounter god in her monthly message for october Eight, 1989, Our Lady said, Dear children, today I am also inviting you to prayer. I am always calling you, but you are still far away. Therefore, from today, seriously commit yourselves to dedicating time to God. I am with you, and I wish to teach you to pray with the heart. My wife Liz and Q the Spirit always mentions, you know, go within and pray with the heart. In prayer with the heart, you will encounter God. Therefore, dear children, pray, pray, pray. And, when, and, and the reason why I put this in my talk in this order, because the chapel is a very great place to pray with the heart and, and to go in and to be quiet and be still. And I was just reading something from, um, I'm not sure where I read it from. It might have been Science of Mind magazine, but it was talking about a, a compass, right? Everybody knows what a compass is, hopefully. 
and sometimes you know the needle goes this goes in different places but they said when you're still in meditation right eventually that needle will go north and, and you'll find your truth and everybody's truth's different right i'm not preaching one way i'm not teaching one path i do believe in god and I believe God is love and God is everywhere. God is not just up there in heaven. It's what I believe. I could be wrong. But that truth, that north, right? You, you know what resonates with you. You know when you're doing something that's not right for you, right? And what that might be hurting others or family members or friends or maybe not eating well. Last night we had a party with carbs. <laughs> You name it, any carb there was, we ate it. So t today I'm, 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 I'm going mellow today. I'm going to eat a little more healthy. Um, from the same book, the conditions of quiet and solitude are needed to pray with the heart. In the Gospels, Jesus often withdrew to a place of quiet. The apostles gather around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no time even to eat. That's from Mark 6, 31. And then from Daily Word, Unity. Discover. I discover for myself the freeing power of truth. There is a great power within me. I may not be aware of it consciously, but part of me knows there is more to my being than appears on the surface. As I focus my attention inward through meditation, I discover a wellspring of energy. Every cell of my body is in tune with the flow of life. I am revitalized and restored with a recognition of my innate wholeness, for I am a reflection of God. Jesus discovered this power in himself and throughout his earthly ministry, he taught that same power dwells in each of us. Go within, go into the heart. This is a fundamental truth, right? The, the North Compass. I am humbled as I recognize this inner radiance as the eminent light of God. I discover for myself the freeing power of truth. And from Psalm chapter 1, verse 3, they are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. And if you watched one of the other videos, I spoke about Palanca, and I'm going to read just a little paragraph from Palanca. When I think about Eddie, the fir very first words that come to mind are peace and serenity. In a world looking to everything eternal to find happiness and peace, all you need to do is spend 15 minutes with Eddie. It is inevitable that you will come to realize you have all you need to find contentment within yourselves. Thank you. Um, most of these videos are 15 minutes or longer. So even if you don't know me personally and we don't hang out together, we could spend together 15 minutes in these Friends in the Spirit 111 videos. So this was something that I was going to skip, but since I'm in the video form, I'm going to read it. From the Toltec tradition, they have what is called the Four Agreements. They are, number one, be impeccable with your words. Speak with integrity. Say only what you mean. Avoid using the word to speak against yourself or to gossip about others. Use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. Getting a lot of truth here. Number two, don't take anything personally. Nothing others do is because of you. What others say and do is a projection of their own reality, their own dream. When you are immune to the opinions and actions of others, you won't be the 
victim of needless suffering. Number three, don't make assumptions. Find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstandings, sadness, and drama. With just this one agreement, you can completely transfer your life. Number four, always do your best. Your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy as opposed to sick. Under any circumstance, simply do your best, and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. And I'm gonna add a not just, I'm gonna add not just sick, but when you're tired, right? When you're tired, it's, 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 it's hard, but do your best, try. So I have been in television for over 35 years. I don't know, maybe 38. <laughs> I've been at Good Morning America 33 years, 3-3. Three, three. It's a pretty cool number, right? That's when Jesus supposedly died, 33. So you would think that in television, right, in, in that type of job, there's not ministry going on. Um, but wherever you are, ministry could happen. And I was going to ask questions to the people that, that attended is there a place that, that you work where you feel like it, it's hard to minister or you don't think ministry exists? Because ministry exists everywhere, right? You could be kind, you could be loving, you could be thoughtful, helpful to people everywhere. At all different types of jobs, at school, at home, at church, in the playground, at the supermarket, in your car. So ministry, giving to people and, and helping and nurturing and loving is everywhere, friends in the spirit. Nine, ten, so I'm going to give a little background on my TV. And, and um, if you search in my Eddie Louisi page, I actually gave a talk at Keokuk High School with my daughter Olivia. That's in Iowa. And I gave more of a career talk. And I'm also associated, I do a lot of mentoring with Future Now Media Conference. So you could check them out also. I, I've given some talks for the students there on their media tours. 1981, I started WPIX-TV, Channel 11. That's the home of Yankee Baseball. Um, I worked on a TV show. I was going to say Catholic. I mean, there was a Catholic priest that was the founder and that was the leader. But it was a Judeo-Christian called the Christophers. And the show was called Christopher Close-Up, and I started working there. Um, I was an associate director. I did a little stage managing, and eventually I got promoted to, the, to be the director. So I directed a bunch of their shows. And this is their motto. It's better to light one candle than to curse the darkness. The Christophers believe that even a tiny flame illuminates the darkness. The simplest kindness contributes to a better world. So where there is darkness, let us bring light. Let us feed one hungry neighbor, cast one intelligent vote, or offer one prayer for peace. Let us fulfill God's mission for each of us by performing acts of kindness, using our individual gifts and talents. If we are Christ bearers or Christophers, we can help change the world for the better and overcome its darkness with God's light. It's interesting they use Christ bearer, Christopher's God. They don't use Jesus. And I could do a whole long talk and, and, and about believings of Jesus, but at least the little that I know, at least that I learned, Jesus was his name as a human being. His last name wasn't Christ, it wasn't Jesus Christ. So the Christ, the Christ consciousness has existed way before Jesus and continues to exist. So being a Christ bearer, a bearer of love, truth, kindness, um, is for all of us. And I also, I told you I have different Facebook groups and messenger groups where we send out prayers and blessings. And one dear friend in the spirit you know, ask for prayers for Christians that are being persecuted. And God bless them all. 
And I wrote, as a friend in the spirit, we pray for everyone, not just Christians. I was going to skip this, and now I'm not, since I have <laughs> free access on the internet. This was a Polanka also. Dear Ed, and this is from a friend in the spirit, and, and uh, Christopher. In the years we worked together for the Christophers, I've always admired your joyous and generous spirit. You're always ready to jump in and help whatever needs to be done. In parentheses, that set you designed for our Amy Grant interview is still my favorite of the bunch. Your family first attitude also sets a great example for those around you who might be tempted to let career get in the way of the really important things in life. Ultimately, you're living as the best Christian you can be, and that's pretty darn great. Thanks for sharing your creativity and your faith with all of us, Tony Rossi. A little aside, um, when we used to shoot the Christophers, we used to shoot down at HBO on 23rd Street, New York City. And it was a small interview set, call a one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two, meaning one chair against one chair. And so, and it was a half hour discussion. So it was an easy show to, to, to direct. But we went on location to do an interview with Amy Grant, I think somewhere up by Westbury, because she was doing a concert. So we got a hotel room, and you know what hotel rooms, like a conference room, it's just a desk and chairs. So we had to be creative. So being a musician and a creative person, I brought my guitar, I brought a mandolin, I brought different religious articles. I don't know what else I brought, but I went through my house and I found different things. And we had a, a fabulous director of photography, lighting director that lit things really cool. And you never knew we were in a hotel. It was really, really beautiful. And Amy Grant and I are friends. We're not, we're, we're friendly, let's put it that way. You know, we don't call each other and this and that, but I met her back in 1988 and I said a Good Morning America when Michael W. Smith was her piano player. And I think I gave the whole story about Amy, but she's been on the show several times and we were friendly and I went to her concert and saw her at a couple of venues. Um, but at that, that time, I believe somebody, there was a death in her family and she just found out like an hour ago. And we thought she was gonna cancel the interview and she came down and she was very calm and you know, she was sad and, and not that bubbly Amy that she normally was, but we gave her our condolences and said, you know, do you sure you wanna do the interview? She says, yes, you know, I committed. And she did the interview and she did a great job. So Amy, if you see this video, God bless you, I love you. Chaz Corzine, who used to work with Amy and is a dear friend of Amy, and Vince Gill, God bless you all. Love you all, you guys, and all my friends down in Nashville. So I went into mentoring Future Now Media Conference, and it's it's an organization where where all college students and grads come in once once a day, once a day for a big media conference down in New York City, and there's a lot of big shot people in the business, they're mentors, and, and it's, a, it's a wonderful day. Um, I'm not going to get into all those details, but you could check it out. But the second day had media tours. And last year, I had a media tour at GMA. And I had a dozen kids or so. And they sat down and they were asking career questions. And then one young lady said, how do you bring Jesus into work? And I said, woo, wasn't expecting that. And I said, you know, I don't talk about Jesus or God at work, but I try to bring the light of Christ, the light of God, the light of Jesus into work by my personality, by being friendly, by being professional, by being creative, by being kind to people and all people, not just the host and not just the celebrities, but every guest that's in the show and people in the audience and people in the crew. and and going to work, the parking garage, and the security attendants, and the people that help out in the, in the pantry helping with the food and stuff. I try, to, I try to bring that kindness to everybody, and honesty. Excuse me. Um, and I think if you see my picture on Friends in the Spirit, I changed it up. It's a picture of me with the shirt. 
and a blazer. And I'm on the set of Good Morning America because I was interviewed a few weeks ago for a TV program called Walk in Faith. And Craig was the, the executive producer or host. And it supposedly is coming out October 25th, a full half hour interview. And it's be a day in the life of Eddie Luisi. And it was all shot on the set of Good Morning America and behind the scenes. And I think they even grabbed a couple people for a little sound bites. And I think they grabbed Robin Roberts. And what I've heard, and I don't know the details, but Craig asked, you know, give me one word to describe Eddie. And Robin said, I can't describe him in one word. So supposedly she chatted for a minute, minute 30 or so. So I can't wait to hear it. Robin, if you're watching this, you're a dear friend in the spirit. One, 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 I love you. Thank you for everything you've done for me and my family. Thank you. So then I was going to mention friends in the spirit, one, 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 because I think in the people sitting there were there maybe eight friends in the spirit. Everybody else were from the Catholic Church, from the surrounding area. And I was going to briefly describe what it is, and most of you know what it is, except for you newcomers, but we're a community, a welcoming community of all religions, all faiths, all spiritualities, and we practice love and kindness and sharing. And I was going to show them my article in Science of Mind magazine. That's the cover. That's a picture of me with my tattoos, blessed and forgiven. So also I was younger and thinner. And I Xeroxed all this. Has my morning ritual. Has pictures of me with celebs. I mean, I was so honored and blessed to be part of this magazine. I love Science of Mind. There's me and my wife doing Cue the Spirit. Me with Clapton and John Mayer. And um, it had the, from the aside from the writer. So I've read this all before in the past. So you could go back to previous videos if you want to check them out. Um, I had a few more testimonies I was going to read. Um, and then I had a couple ending prayers. So I'm going to do that. We're at 22 minutes. This is cool. Thank you for sticking around and watching this. Don't forget to share your faith uh, with your faith, family, and friends with, with people. Um, feel free to comment. Feel free to share this. If you're in other groups, please share it to other groups. We're trying to get the word out, the message out. We're trying to promote Friends in the Spirit 111. So thank you. Eddie, once again, your message was right on point for me. Oh, these are testimonies from Friends in the Spirit. Interesting. <laughs> in its simplicity, your message was profound. Thank you for sharing your past two weeks and for Robin Roberts' message. Make your mess your message. Will become another of my mantras. Ed, you are a true blessing in my life. Thank you. Another person. You are truly a beacon of light and guidance, even as cascades of challenges pummel you and compete for your attention. Thank you. These two shall pass as you are becoming stronger each and every day. Bless you, your work, your silver lining perspectives, and keep on breathing. Prayers are with you and your family as you find your way through the changes in your lives. Thank you. Third one. Love your suggestion for last week. At one time, I used to write down and reflect on the blessings I experienced each day just before going to bed. It was something I loved doing, but as with other good things, once I skipped a day here and there, I lost the rhythm. I am so glad to start writing down my 10 blessings daily. As I begin, you are one of my true blessings today. Thank you. This is number four. Thank you for all you are. By the way, it's been a long time since I have been to church, and your message on your post about kindness really resounds with me. I told my hubby that it was the first time in a long time where I felt connected to God in a meaningful way, and it prompted me to do a few things to follow the mission you gave me. Thanks. Number five, if you have a little time, perhaps you can give a listen to Eddie's message. 
I look forward to his message every week because I learn a little bit more about myself each time. I think more about life and others. I think what else can I do to make others happy? I like that Eddie shares other insights too. This helps to put things in perspective even more for me. I am inspired by his messages as they encourage me to do more. Every time I listen, when I finish, I always go back to writing my book. He inspires me and reminds me that so many people in this world need help. And it doesn't take much to make a difference in someone's life. Thank you. And this, I think, is number six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You are a humble person that only wants to help others. You never ask for anything in return. There aren't many people like you in this world. Sometimes I feel like I have been gifted so much by you with nothing to offer in return. I listen, Eddie, and your words are a huge gift to me. I look forward to Saturdays to hear your new message. I can't say enough how blessed I feel to have connected with you. Thank you. And like I said earlier in my talk, I'm not reading these to pat myself on the back. Because, dear friends in the Spirit 111, you are touching people's lives. You are making a difference. And even if you're not getting letters and testimonies and palancas like I do, keep on doing what you're doing. You know, just last week I was kind of getting down in the dumps and, and this ministry, the, it, Facebook was, was messing up and I wasn't getting the shares and the reach. And I started a little Facebook group, and there's like 30 of us there. And I thought I was going to just stop this page and just be a small group of 30. And then a dear friend just wrote, no, keep on doing what you're doing. And, you know, I had to listen to my own messages, too. Because so many times I give messages about here's the surface and here's the roots and the roots are growing. And I think I even posted a picture from, from Rumi where it shows all oh, the roots are beautiful and then, you know, the, this is, the leaves are pretty barren. But it's like, this is all beautiful, this is all growing, and it just takes a second for it to sprout out. And I was like, personally just given up. I was like, where is this ministry going? Where is this going? But um, a dear friend wrote to me and said something really nice. Thank you, Ken. And so I'm continuing, and we're going to see where God wants this to go. So these are a couple ending prayers I was going to end with. And then um, I think I'm going to end too, because we're at 28 minutes. But I have a bunch of reflections. Maybe I'll do that another time. This is from Science of God, uh, Science of Mind. God is missing. A couple had two little boys, ages 8 and 10, who were excessively mischievous. The two were always getting into trouble, and their parents could be confident that if any mischief occurred in their town, their two young sons were involved. The parents heard about a clergyman in town who successfully disciplined children in the past. Uh-oh. So they contacted him. He asked to see the boys individually, so the eight-year-old was sent to meet with him first. The clergyman sat the boy down and asked him sternly, Where is God? The boy made no response, so the clergyman repeated the question in even a sterner tone. Where is God? Again, the boy made no attempt to answer, so the clergyman raised his voice even more and shook his finger in the boy's face. Where is God? I don't really like clergymen like this. But I'm reading the story. It has a good ending. At that, the boy bolted from the room, ran home, and shout, shut himself in the closet. His older brother followed him into the closet and asked, What happened? The younger brother replied, We are in big trouble. This time, God is missing, and they think we did it. <laughs> An enlightened rebel is aware when synchros synchronicity is missing, signaling that it's time to look inside and find what is out of sync. It's a reflected time for us to work with forgiveness, unresolved anger, and disharmony. 
It's time to renew or return to the core values you live by. It's interesting, I said synchronicity, and I just mentioned Ken because he wrote a book about synchronicity. And Ken was at the talk also, so thank you, Ken, for coming and bringing your friend, Roger. Okay, so I'm going to end with one more prayer. I still have stuff to read, but it's 30 minutes, and I know you're tired. Thank you for sticking out. From Conversations with God, Neil Donald Walsh, I believe God wants you to know that your light is seen, your heart is known, your soul is cherished, my more people than you might imagine. If you knew how many others have been touched in wonderful ways by you, you would be astonished. If you knew how many people feel so much for you, you would be shocked. You are far more wonderful than you think you are. Rest with that. Rest easy with that. Breathe again. You are doing fine. More than fine. Better than fine. You're doing great. So relax and love yourself today. Then take in God's love right now. Take it in. You deserve it. Dear friends in the spirit, 111, you are doing fine. So thank you for listening to this long message. Thank you for listening part one, two, and three. If you haven't, go back and listen to them. I'll start something fresh next week. Don't forget to share your faith with family and friends. And as my lovely wife says, cue the spirit. God bless you. Have a great week.